Euclid is revered by and held in high esteem by the powers that be, as exemplified in Freemasonry. Euclid's geometry allowed them to build expensive cathedrals and constructions, and make them powerful and rich. So that's probably one reason, at least to a certain degree, as to why Euclid is held in such high esteem. To a higher degree, Euclid could be revered because his geometry is used to occult self-evident truths about our mind-body reality. Some occulted self-evident truths are Visible and tangible space both exist in this reality. They are always there, independent of us. Visible and tangible space are conjoined in that, without a real physical object in our tangible space, there can be no visible object or object of sight in our visible space. Visible and tangible space have different qualities and properties distinct from each other. Visible railway lines appear to converge. In tangible space, they never do. The axle span of a tractor is a measuring rod that does not contract. Objects travelling in straight lines above us will rise or sink in our visual field. But aeroplanes and clouds cruise at a constant altitude. Visibles are objects of sight. They are the signs seen by the eye of real external objects. A tangible is an object of touch. It is the real thing signified by the visible sign. Touch, taste, smell and sound sum to a sentient experience of a real external object. Visibles and visible space are correctly described by spherical geometry. This is not researched or discussed in mathematics or physics. Attempts made in the 1700s are hardly known today. Tangible geometry and space is planar. It is permanently experiential and in plain sight, overwhelming the senses and the mind daily. Visibles Objects of sight are positioned as visible figure and extension on the surface of a sphere when the eye is conceived to be at the centre of the sphere. Visibles, when seen directly and from the centre of the sphere, appear perfectly rectilinear or planar, unless very close or high in the sky. Visible and tangible geometry, spherical, planar and hyperbolic, are two-dimensional geometries within the same framework sometimes known as pan-geometry or astral geometry. On another level, Euclid and planar geometry renders us inattentive to the differences in visible and tangible geometry. Whether this is used in mathematical geometry and the physical sciences, or when we are bombarded with images and ideas in moving pictures from Hollywood. We naturally go 
from the signs seen by the eye to the things signified by them in our minds. This hardwired faculty is a part of our common sense package. We use this faculty to observe nature and learn our environment and to function in lived life. We do it all the time, but we don't attend to it anymore. We are unaware that visible figure and extension constantly changes relative to our eye situation. But the thing signified in our minds seldom does and is hardly ever questioned. There are those who know this and use it to their advantage. They know how the eye works and how it can be used to control. For them, visual perception and its operations of the mind are well understood. So it's easy for them to dupe us. Maybe they think to themselves, let's just swap ideas for reality by using mathematics and metaphysics. Let's confuse ratios in units, scales and measures. Let's draw geometric figures with extension on planar surfaces and make believe it to be real. Let's render images on screens by computing binary arithmetic and enforce the belief by incessant repetition. Let's just paint by numbers, because the masses of useful idiots will never see what's in front of their eyes. The, the self-evident truths mentioned are entirely ignored by the physical sciences. You will not find propositions in mathematics or physics that deal rigorously with these topics. Only in art, psychology, and computer imaging are they superficially discussed. Why is an integral part of human perception so ignored? Vision is arguably the most important sense we have. All optical measurements fundamentally depend on it. So the question, why is the geometry of visible space or the geometry of visibles not discussed or researched? That for me is an elephant in the room that needs to be addressed.